Hello, I am back. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be drawing a D&D character based on the roll of the dice. Let's bring out the Tower of Destiny! So we have a Gith Yankee wizard, and uh, these are the inspiration picks that I found on Pinterest to sort of inspire me for this drawing. Uh, I was going for like, there's a plus three to strength there, so I was going to draw them quite bulky, but then the description, which there wasn't really much description on D&D Beyond, so I ended up going to Forgotten Realms, which was more comprehensive, even though it talked about them in past tense, like they're all dead. Anyway, that's a whole different thing. Um, I ended up going with more of a slender frame, because slender people can still be very, very strong. Uh, it can be misleading. Where was I? Yes, yeah, so inspiration picks. Uh, shout out to Kim, who may or may not be my sister. She suggested that I include a feather and star button in my next drawing. And um, one of the main things that I was focused around here was the Githyanki's nose, because in Baldur's Gate and stuff like that, they have a very like non-nose nose like too much plastic surgery or kind of Voldemort like just like the the hole where a nose should be seems to be appearing a lot but the description the only description of a nose that I could find for Gith Yankee was here and it says that they have highly placed flat noses which to me would mean that they're kind of they're wider but they're closer to the face so that's where I kind of drew inspiration from the ones you can see here but also just made it a little bit more of a normal nose like it doesn't say it's upturned or anything so I don't see why you would see that much nostril even anyway you see how I draw a nose later <laughs> let's get started so on D&D Beyond there isn't much physical description of the Gith Yankee. It's all very focused on the history of the race and how they came to have psychic powers or psionic powers. Uh, the only passage that mentions their physical traits uh, says a lanky people with skin tones of yellows, greens and browns. Gith Yankee complement their physical prowess with psionic might blah 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 about being psychic. So really just they're saying that you can be yellow, green or brown skin tone wise and you're lanky. But there is a lot more description in different parts of the internet. So I'm assuming that probably d and Beyond has revised this race at some point. Or I don't really know the history of who made up these, made this up. I don't know who made this up, but it's quite limited as far as physical description on the official guidebook website. As far as mechanics go, uh, you have creature type humanoid, size medium, walking speed is 30 feet. You have a trait called Astral Knowledge and another called Gith Yankee Psionics. And, uh, oh, and also one called Psychic Resi Resilience. You are resistant to psychic damage. So I'll put the other two up on the screen here they're a little bit more detailed but they do give you some cool sort of magic cantrips one of them you get to use mage hand which is huge because it's that you can get into so many shenanigans with mage hand and the hand is invisible when you cast this cantrip with gith yankee psionics which means no one can see it i think usually it's like a spectral hand so it is visible but in like a ghosty kind of way uh but not in this case not in this case I don't even know if it's really worth getting into the nitty gritty of the wizard class right now because when the new D&D playbook comes out, wizard is one of the ones that they've restructured and redone. So I mean, let's, I'll, I'll get into it and we can talk about the changes when we know what they are. Uh, so a wizard, which I have done before, is the ultimate magic user. They study their magic from books and have spell slots that let them 
sort of, well, it limits how many spells you can cast a day. So you're not just popping off spells left and right all the time. Uh, there are currently a lot of subclasses if you're being a wizard. Uh, they're all based around the the schools of knowledge or the sort of areas that you've chosen to study. Um, I think this character, who I'm going to call Wandle, with a W, not Randall, Wandle, uh, he is studying the school of conjuration. Uh, he's conjuring a feather right there, as you can see, which is a minor conjuration. And, uh... Yeah, there's not much more to say about that, really. Um, the the type of spells that you can learn are vast. Uh, usually, you can you would choose to focus, like you do a lot of conjuration spells if you're studying the school of conjuration. But that doesn't mean you can't learn any enchantment spells or illusions. But like you can you can learn all the spells, but there is a benefit to casting conjuration spells when you study this school of conjuration. Now, Wendell doesn't have any negative stats in his abilities table here, so I think he's a pretty confident guy. Like, he only has plus one to charisma, but his plus three in wisdom and plus three in strength mean that he's got that good balance of you know kind of being an athlete who's also getting perfect grades so very confident um excellent at recalling things like he has the plus two in intelligence so he can recall information from books really well he's got plus two dexterity the lowest stat he has is con and that's just average at plus zero so uh he can take a hit just as well as the next guy uh <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to draw him being a little bit smarmy. I think he's uh, he's used to getting his way. Um, whether he's using charisma or not, uh, I think he mostly relies on himself. So when I say he's used to getting his way, I think it's more a case of like, if someone denies him entry into a building, he'll use his strength to scale the building. He'll use his wisdom to sort of figure out a better plan using probably blue plant blue plan, blueprints or something of the diagram of the build like he's very confident in relying on himself so he doesn't really need the charisma but he can use it when he needs to a little bit it is above average uh with the plus one and yeah, he's also got that psionic, psychic kind of ability. So he's also got the mage hand going on. And uh, yeah, I think he's a little bit of a cocky bastard. As far as background goes, I'm gonna just read out what it has under race details for Githyanki so that it kind of sets a little bit more of a scene and makes sense when I talk about where this guy grew up. So, once members of a people who escaped servitude to mind flayers, Githyanki Gith split from their cousins, the Githzari, and fled to the astral plane. In that timeless silver, silvery realm, Githyanki honed their psionic powers and built a great city called Turanar. Turanar. Whatever. They have since spread throughout the multiverse, starting in outposts outside the astral plane called Kreshes. Kretches. There are too many words that I can't pronounce here, but whatever. Uh, where time passes and their children can reach adulthood. So in the astral plane, time doesn't pass. I don't really know how that works, but it doesn't apparently. So they've left the astral plane to start families and like the children can actually grow up great um obviously this guy would have had to grow up at one of these crutches crushes and uh he's been surrounded by just only gith yankee so he only knows his own people and his own race and his own culture and i think because of that i'm gonna say they have like a tradition kind of like rumspringer where they have to go out and mingle with 
other races and learn about other cultures and just like gain knowledge from other sources of information other than what they already have. So um, in order to grow and evolve, you need to learn things. And the only way to learn things is to interact with people who know things that you don't. So that's his sort of primary objective when he leaves home. It's to meet other people. And that is why he was able to join an adventuring party. He's looking for probably one that has a diverse array of other races. Ideally, um, the other players would not just be different races, but be from very different places. Like even to the point where maybe someone is from the Feywild and someone is from like, like an Asimar or something, a celestial plane versus the astral plane or like the Underdark. Uh, just people who have very, very different backgrounds in their experiences. I think this character Wandle would really like to learn from them in that capacity and as far as like whether he's interested in gold or like the kind of adventures where the party is looting things I think he would initially not really care but then very quickly realize that a wizard needs gold and jewels and diamonds for their spells like a lot of the spells require you to have like a diamond in order to do that spell or a certain um like gold value of component pieces or so i've never played as a wizard so correct me if you have played as a wizard and i'm just completely wrong in making this up but i've i've seen enough of the wizard spells where they sort of say like 50 gold pieces worth of gemstones or something so it doesn't really matter what gemstone you're using but it has to be worth that much in gold so you need to acquire a lot of gold if you want to cast those particular spells um assuming your dm doesn't come up with like a sort of sneaky workaround where they're like well i don't really care if you don't have the components because like other magical classes don't use components or um, i mean all of them do but a lot of the time you sort of overlook it because they have an arcane focus which means they don't need to like get out all these little bits of herbs and bullshit and it's just it, if it gets in the way of gameplay usually a dm will be like i don't care about that just like if it's a really powerful spell maybe you need it but for the little spells you don't need it anyway i digress wandle's main objective is to acquire knowledge that he can not only have himself but take back home to his people and his family and add to maybe like a vast library or a collection that they have um potentially to maybe fight the mind flayers in the astral plane again and just fully defeat them this time or i don't know just to like build their civilization so that they're improving constantly uh, for whatever reason the goal here is to acquire knowledge and particularly knowledge of how other communities and other races have flourished and evolved and thrived or how they have stories of how certain civilizations have completely fallen and um, what, the, what they maybe did wrong or if someone attacked them and how that war happened and you get it they're kind of they're trying to learn stuff and logically it would make sense if the main reason behind what they're trying to learn is to like not make the same mistakes as others have in the past but also use the knowledge to their advantage and um annihilate the mind flayers who have completely like stuffed up their culture well not really stuffed up their culture but like they hate the Mind Flayers. The Mind Flayers want to keep, want to enslave them and everyone. But yeah, this is Wandle, the Gith Yankee Wizard. Let me know what you think of him in the comments. And if, like my sister, uh, you have any little suggestions of trinkets I could add to any upcoming artwork that I do, please let me know what you'd like to see. I can't guarantee it'll be the next one, but it'll be in one of them. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your week. Bye!